Hi, and welcome to today's video. Um, well, uh, there's a couple things I want to get uh, said first. Uh, first is I wanted to put out a very heartfelt thank you to all of the people that sent emails regarding uh, the personal video that I did before about life outside of domains. I can't tell you how many um, hundreds of emails, literally hundreds of emails I got from people that I have heard of, people that I've never met, and uh, just kind, uh, general people who have either been through the same situation that I went through or are currently going through uh, the situation that I went through. Um, and it's nice that people reached out. I'm ni it's nice that people hopefully got the point of the video, and that is that people uh, are people outside of domaining and people have real issues and they deal with them and you don't know about them and you should and you should understand sometimes why things are the way they are. Uh, it, I mean it's those people that help me get through the rough times uh, and that's why I started the pay it forward thing with DNF College and uh, eventually with this video blog theartofthename.com which for some reason I continue to call the art of the domain.com because well I own both it doesn't matter anyway but uh, anyway it is actually the art of the name.com so thanks to everybody who sent emails uh, and called and uh, I can't tell you how many people said that they were crying while they watched the video that certainly was not my intent I think they were crying mostly because it brought uh, some memories that they had back uh, from previous uh, situations that they had been in and uh, like I said I wanted to make sure I put out a heartfelt thank you to everybody that took the time to send me an email. Um, the biggest question I was asked about that video surprisingly enough was why did I decide to do it then and a lot of people asked that even my wife, my mom, my sister uh, and a few other domainers that I meet and to be quite honest with you I was thinking about doing that video for a very long time and um, I finally sat down and uh, decided I was going to do it. And it also coincides with February, which is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. And um, just because you have anxiety doesn't mean you're mental or crazy. It just means that you're going through something and uh, you haven't gone through it before and it's hitting you pretty hard. So uh, that's part of the reason, uh, mostly because I needed to get it out there and I need people to understand that... Uh, there is life beyond domains for all of us. And um, I, I, like I said, I don't need to go on anymore about that. You guys all watched the video. Uh, it was probably one of the most popular videos that I've done, which I don't know if that's good or bad, but we're going to keep going. Uh, today's video is going to be quite interesting, but I'm first going to start out with something a little odd. We have these vitamins, and uh, they're here in this package, and I'm going to hold it up, and I'm watching my camera so you can see it. They're called uh, vitamins, and it says they're calm. It's that they make them for men, for women, uh, for anything. And, and I figured, okay, vitamins that can make you calm, and I'll just hold it up so you can see it. That sounds kind of cool, but the problem is you can't. It, it's almost impossible to open the package when you shut it. You have to keep it half open. Like right now, I can't open the package, and I'm thinking that that's really not a good way to keep calm you have to basically almost throw it on the ground to get it open so it's kind of humorous that they call it calm because it's anything but calming so I'm not gonna be having many of these little they, they're supposed to have vitamins and crap in them but anyway I'm still struggling with it to get it open and uh, I don't think it's very calming ah oh, there we go finally got it open I'll, I'll have a minute later but at least you can see I finally got the package open but calming they are not Anyway, that's my product uh, sponsorship. I don't really think it's a sponsorship because it's not really a glowing review. As far as my spam, I'm, it's now mostly uh, erectile dysfunction spam. And I can tell you honestly that after 20 years of marriage, uh, I don't think my wife would care if I got erectile dysfunction. She'd just be happy that I would stop chasing her around the house. Um, on, a, on a sad note, it's not really a sad note, uh, my stalker, uh, Kirsten, has stopped emailing me. I guess she's decided that uh, I'm not worthy of her email anymore. So she's moving on, and I'll miss her, uh, sadly. So now we're going to get to the uh, part of the video that uh, I guess is going to be surprising because I've never really complained or ranted or anything before about 
companies or the way they handle things. But today's going to be one of those videos. So um, I'm just going to get to it. Um, uh, Monday, I think it was about September the 10th, uh, GoDaddy hosting an email went down for at least six hours. Well, GoDaddy PR spun it as it was uh, corrupted router data tables uh, that caused it, and it wasn't a hack or anything like that. Me personally, I believe it was some sort of attack because I had 12 uh, shared server accounts uh, with GoDaddy with about 600 sites, and all of those uh, servers had their index pages modified and code was inserted so when you went to the sites, uh, it came up with a blank page and then eventually it uh, went to some parking page belonging to somebody other than me. So I do believe stuff was uh, done to the sites. All of my sites were affected and a lot of customer sites were affected. Um, any sites that I was hosting for customers on GD, I also got the similar complaints and I had to fix them. And it was on both HTML and WordPress sites, so it wasn't just uh, a WordPress that was affected or anything like that. So, I mean, I know PR has to spin it the way they do, but the bottom line is I ended up moving, canceling my 12 shared hosting servers with them. I set up 12 HostGator uh, servers, moved all 600 sites over to HostGator. I think I have one or two accounts left at GD for hosting. Um, but I moved them all to HostGator and it took me four weeks to get those sites cleaned and off of Google's blacklist where it says every time that somebody goes to uh, search for your site in Google, it says this site may be harmful to your computer. It took me four to six weeks to get rid of all those messages and clean up all the sites and move them. The quick fix for those of you that are still having that problem, and hopefully you're not, is that you had to lock down, you had to uh, redo the index page and lock it down so it was not writable so that the code, because once it was on the server, it infected all of the sites on that specific server. So that was it. I had to clean each site individually before uploading them to a clean HostGator server. And now they're, they're at HostGator and they're safe. And HostGator has all kinds of tools to make sure that you can keep your sites clean. I still recommend you use Manage WP um, and that you keep all your plugins up to date, you keep your WordPress versions up to date, and you do uh, backups as much as you can, especially if it's an important site and a business site that you can't have going down. So while on GoDaddy, um, it would be nice if they added uh, bulk add domains to your shared hosting accounts, but I've been asking for that for years, so I don't expect that anytime soon. Also, as far as the 60-day lock goes, I really think it's time to get rid of that. People sell domains, and they need to transfer them out. And they need to transfer them out before the 60 days is up. And currently, the only way to remove the 60-day lock, and you may want to write this down, is to email review60 at godaddy.com, and they will usually remove the 60-day lock. So... Um, that's it for GoDaddy for now. There'll be a little bit more on them later. Um, Web.com. This is an interesting story, and I had uh, a meeting with uh, some of their uh, executive staff, I don't know, maybe a year ago or so. I don't even remember. And one of the things that I mentioned to them that I thought it was a little odd that they offer to do business Facebook pages on their website, um, but the problem is, uh, you can't order it on their website. You can just see it and see all the features, but there's no order button. They actually want you to call them. Well, people want to order things online. They don't want to pick up the phone after they've made a decision that they want to buy something. You just give them one extra step and one extra reason not to order it. So maybe you should actually put the order button on and then after they order and pay, then you send them a note that says something like a consultant will call you soon to figure out how we can work out your plan, uh, your custom plan for your business Facebook page and gather your details. I mean, people want to order online. You're a web company. Take the order online. Well, let's not leave out Moniker. So um, Moniker obviously has gone through a lot of changes recently, but some things have not changed at Moniker. Um, they let people transfer uh, domains uh, in without hassle. Uh, but if you ever want to try to transfer a domain name out of Moniker, uh, you can't do that very quickly. 
Um, and if you sell a domain name, you pretty much have to beg the king for salt, like in the old days, um, to get the domain out. Uh, so moniker, wake up, because that pisses people off, and the people you're pissing off are your customers. So maybe you want to look at that policy and make it as easy to get out as it is to get in. So there's that. Now I'm going to talk about a buddy of mine who I do like. Uh, I just read a, I get the updates from Domain Name Wire every time Andrew Alleman puts a post out. And uh, I got one recently, and uh, it wasn't anything that, that he said. It was just the, the heading caught me off guard. Uh, no sooner do I do a, a video explaining there are no experts, and he takes the uh, WebFest post uh, and takes their headline, it wasn't his headline, and says something like, come have lunch with the experts at Domain Fest or WebFest or whatever it's called these days. Um, well, again, there really are no experts. These are just some people that may or may not be better um, at certain things than you are. Uh, an expert is anyone who just is a bit smarter than you that, or the person that they're talking to, uh, like my plumber. The guy's an expert. He can fix my toilet, and I can't. But his boss can probably, I don't know, drain something right down to the sewer and whatever the hell he does. I don't know, but... I mean, there are no real experts. An expert means you know everything there is to know about everything in, in a particular field. And, and in most fields, things change, especially in technology, where even uh, SEO, I mean, I could be an expert today and tomorrow I could not be an expert because every algorithm comes out and you have to adjust. I believe every industry is like that. But again, this isn't against Andrew Alleman or DomainFest. It's just that I truly don't believe that there are experts. So finally, um, an interesting uh, thing was brought to my attention today um, by a customer that I've designed some web websites for. And this uh, is another GoDaddy one. So this one deserves a tisk tisk to GoDaddy. Um, domains by proxy. Is it really protected who is? Uh, I thought people needed like a cease and desist letter or something to get a person's contact information or file a lawsuit or, or even send a letter from a lawyer or something, but apparently not. Uh, this week, um, this gentleman sent me three letters that he received by domains uh, by proxy where a simple customer complaint resulted in them handing over the customer's full name and information. So all I can say to that is tisk tisk. Make sure you guys know that uh, really, first of all, if you're going to use privacy, um, there's not a whole lot of reasons to put a domain under privacy because uh, people can't find you to buy it so I mean I put a domain under privacy if it's something that I'm never going to want to sell and it's a business that I'm building out uh, but privacy is not meant to really hide it's meant to uh, make it so it's more difficult for customers to find you if you really don't want to sell an asset or a domain name anyway so these letters that he got um, I'll read some of them uh, we received a, an inquiry related to your domain name. The specific inquiry related to your domain can be described as follows. And I put blank.com. I made that up myself because I didn't want to put in the domain name. Um, possible legal issue regarding your private domain name. Please review the accompanying email notification for further information. If you do not receive that email, please contact general manager at domainsbyproxy.com. And then what's interesting is in accordance with Domains by Proxy's uh, Domain Name Proxy Agreement, and it lists this agreement, link to the agreement, we have charged your credit card in the amount of $20 for Domains by Proxy's processing of this inquiry. So they charged them 20 bucks to process the complaint that they received from just somebody. If you have any questions concerning the above, please contact our customer service center. Thank you for your continued business. Go Daddy. Then he got this one. Uh, as we, dear customer, if we receive notice that there is a possible legal issue regarding the domain name, blank.com, you'll need to contact the complainant via email no later than the close of business, January the 21st, 2013, and provide them with the following information in order for the complainant to remove domains by proxy from this issue. And they required him to send, well, his full name, his company name, his mailing address, his phone number, and his email address. In order to, to prove you have attempted to contact them, we require you to also CC General Manager Domains by Proxy.com on your email to the complainant. Failure to comply may result in the disclosure of your contact information to the complainant. And uh, that was signed by 
the office of the general manager, H. Uh, Fennell. And, um, well, they, I believe they eventually did release his full information um, to uh, the complainant, which I think is surprising, but it is what it is. So, I mean, again, um, if you're going to use privacy who is anywhere, uh, make sure that, uh, I mean, you, you shouldn't use it if it's a domain you're going to plan on selling. Um, you, you can use it. I mean, if you've got something you're concerned about, uh, you should use it. And now I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. If you have any uh, acronym domain names or domains that could be confusingly similar to a trademark, uh, make sure you don't park them because they may pull up information relating to that trademark. Um, what I do with most of my acronym domains so that there can be no dispute is uh, I, I send them all to uh, dnforum.com, the, the acronym for sales section, and I just get extra traffic that way, and it's a good way to avoid any potential issues. But again, if you're not sure whether your domain has a trademark issue or not, you should contact a domain lawyer, and you guys all know who they are. Uh, there's lots of them, like Howard New, John Barry Hill, Zach Muscovich, um, and quite a few others. Uh, so... Uh, do that, um, and then, I mean, that covers most of that stuff. Um, so what do we do? We covered trademarks. We covered a few little issues that some companies should really fix. Um, and, again, uh, there's really no reason to put your name under who is unless you don't plan on selling it or unless you own a trademark and you know you own a trademark, which you shouldn't do. So I'm certainly not going to encourage you to own those. Um, so anyway, GoDaddy has a good feature in their control panel where you can go in and delete a domain name before it expires. Just highlight the domain name in your domain control manager, and then you just hit delete, and it automatically sends it into redemption. So if you are concerned that you do own a domain name that is uh, may have a trademark or something like that, go ahead and get rid of it because there's no point in keeping it. Uh, most of us have been in the industry for a while know that... Uh, Got a, nobody holds trademarks these days because we know it's just stupid and, and the maximum fine is $100,000 per domain that's a trademark plus it's also um, any revenue generated that you've earned from parking or through any other means or what the company may have feels it lost by you having the domain name and, and not them so it's certainly not smart just to start up with trademarks so I think I'm going to keep it pretty short and sweet. Um, again, thanks to everybody who sent those uh, letters and emails in. I was quite surprised with the amount of people uh, that had sent them in and how many stories were eerily similar to mine. Um, and um, that's it. I think uh, I'm going to cut it here. And tomorrow we're going to get back to more traditional domaining. Uh, I think tomorrow I'm going to do a really interesting video on uh, either lead gen. Well, I'll give you a couple of tips while we're still here on lead gen, and then I'll bring it into tomorrow's video. Um, certain lead gen businesses are good, and certain lead gen businesses are bad. Um, and, oh, naturally, the phone rings, so I'll kill that. Um, it'll keep ringing, but who cares? I'll stop it. Uh, right. stop it. Now I've definitely stopped it. Um, so lead gen businesses. So some are really good and some are really bad. If you're going to make ten to fifteen to twenty dollars on a lead gen uh, opportunity, uh, don't bother with it because it's not uh, going to be good. Uh, you want lead gen opportunities where the potential is much higher than that. So. Um, make sure that you can uh, you can concentrate on lead gen opportunities where you're going to make at least $100 per lead and then it's worthwhile. Um, I have a, a buddy who we set up a site for and uh, he's hopefully going to close a $6,500 sale of which he's going to make 15 to 20 percent from lead gen and uh, I'll be able to tell you more about that if it actually closes. I'm hoping it will and uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, um, that's it for today. Tomorrow we're going to tackle lead gen in more detail, and uh, we're going to hopefully teach you how to build some pretty good sites and what types of companies to contact 
and what types of business to get involved with. And again, don't bother with lead gen if you're going to make 5 to $20 off of a lead because it's not worth your time. That's about it. Have a great uh, night, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Take care.